What do you have to say for yourself? I quit. This is it. It is on the pond. So we have a new fish. Uh, we ran into a problem. What is up, everybody? We are back at the greenhouse today, so we are finally going to be filming another episode. I know it has been a minute. You can see the plants over there on the pond going crazy. So uh, before we get talking about today's video, let's go give you a little update on the pond real quick. So I know it's been a minute since I filmed a video, but that is okay. We are back at it now getting stuff done. I've just been saving up some money and had a lot going on. But look at this, guys. This is crazy. Look at these plants. It has literally turned into a giant blanket. So all the water lettuce in and water hyacinth is doing great. For a while there, it started growing. I don't know if you remember. It was like this little corner right here. I have not added any new plants. This is all just new growth from what I did add originally. But uh, yeah, it started turning yellow and kind of dying off and all the algae in the pond died. And I think it's because I had no nutrients at all, like nitrates, phosphates, everything, zero. So what I did was I dosed some of this, some Thrive. It's a fertilizer, all-in-one fertilizer meant for planet aquariums. And I dosed about half the recommended amount, which was way too much because now I have a pretty gnarly hair algae outbreak. But I'm not super worried about it. It's just because I overdosed the fertilizer, so I'll be able to get it fixed up pretty quick. Probably can't see good because of the reflection, but uh, oh yeah, you can kind of see over here growing off the walls. We've got quite a bit of it. But yeah, as soon as we get this enclosure built and get ready for fish, before we move the fish over there, I'm going to uh, get in there, clean out as much of the algae as I can and then do a couple big water changes, and then we will be ready for fish after we do what we're talking about today. So we are finally gonna build the enclosure that I've been talking about. So give you a rough idea of what we're doing. I'll explain it more as we go. But we're basically building a wire mesh enclosure all the way around the pond. It's gonna be six feet tall from the top of the pond, and uh, that is to keep the arowana from jumping out and the birds from going in there and getting eaten by the fish and it's going to house another really cool animal that we're going to get in the future. But I'll tell you about that more when we get it. So for now, let's talk about what we got going on today. I'll explain it a little bit. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, the Luteus Pleco is doing great. It's pretty hard to see him down there. But uh, yeah, he's been doing great, especially with all the algae. I'm sure he is in heaven. Okay, so we are going to get started building the wire mesh enclosure. I... Uh, it started raining again. It has been crazy, guys. Here in northern Utah, we've been having the craziest just snow and rain, like, nonstop. But anyways, the wire mesh enclosure. Uh, I struggled with trying to figure out what I wanted to frame it with because it has to be corrosion-resistant, somewhat durable enough to hold up the mesh and any animals climbing on it, and uh, need it to look decent because I built this awesome pond. I don't want to just cover it with something ugly, you know? I really want it all to look good. So what I didn't mention is the whole front of it, we're gonna make it kind of like a garage door so it opens up. So when people are over, when I'm feeding the fish or just enjoying it, if I want to, I can just open it up and then just close it whenever I'm not here. That way the arowana don't jump out and die. But what we ended up deciding to go with was uh, extruded aluminum. So I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, it's not gonna focus, I don't know. You'll see as I go, but it has these little slots in it so there's all kinds of attachments and stuff. So this is pretty strong for the size. This is only, I think, three quarter inch. Yeah, three quarter inch. And uh, it's super strong. It looks super nice. It was kind of expensive, but that's all right. It's gonna make it all look way better. So there's all kinds of different pieces, different connectors and stuff. So like this piece slides in this little slot and then that connects two straight pieces together, right? There's uh, these little gusseted, there's all kinds of different brackets, but I use these ones because I figured it would be kind of stronger. So these little corner brackets will screw two pieces together, hold it together. There's these little inside corner brackets. You can see those, nothing crazy. Those will hold two pieces together, but I'll more use these on like the supports in the middle, not on the outside of the frame. There's these three-way ones. I don't know, this, probably, this is not focusing on anything, but that's all right, you'll see as I'm building it. But yeah, these slide in. So basically there's all these different fittings. It slides in here, it's got little set screws, and then it's like connects for adults, you know? 
how it all works is these little T-nuts. So that little nut, oh my god, this little nut right here, oh, there you go, you can kind of see it. That slides in and then this little screw tightens it down or screws on whatever type of bracket you have. There you go. So that's how it works. And then once it's all built, I'll have a bunch of these T-nuts with these screws and washers and that's how we'll attach the wire mesh. So I'm gonna get some measurements, start cutting some pieces. The other cool thing with aluminum is I can just cut it with a miter saw. So yeah, we will build the bottom piece and then pretty much build the whole thing out here, which is probably gonna be a pain and then wrap it in wire and then move it over the pond and then secure it down to the concrete. So yeah, I'm sure it's gonna be quite the process, but it should look really good when it's done. I'll explain more about the garage door thing when we get there. Okay, we got the bottom rail all done. So pretty much the frame for the bottom piece, got it all done all the way around. Doesn't seem like much, but that was the hardest part. So I had to figure out how to like do these changes and the height of the brick and go around the pipe down there and all that. But uh, this is it, it ends right here because this whole section in the front will be the garage door. So now what we are gonna do is take our measurements now that we know them and build the top frame, just a big rectangle for the top. And then we will cut all of our upright legs. And then that's when it gets hard. We'll have to take this off and the top piece and connect them off the pond. And then, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So let's get cutting some more pieces and we can get this finished hopefully. Okay, so we're building the top frame right now. But one thing we realized is everything has to be planned out in advance and it is kind of <laughs> turning into a nightmare because anywhere where you're going to put the connectors, you have to have the T-nuts in place when you build everything. So as we go, these are the ones that we're going to hook the mesh to. So this is going to be like the back side or the front side, whatever it is. So yeah, we have to figure out how many T-nuts we need and make sure we're in place before we connect all the pieces. And then for these connectors, it's probably not necessary, but I decided to Loctite all of them. So you see it just slides in here. Tighten one of them up, and then I'm using two, one on each side, just because it's going to be the top. I want it to be extra strong. Oh my gosh. That's way too much. Just a tiny little bit. Slide the two together and then tighten it all up. So it's kind of meticulous doing this with all these little screws and lock tighten each one. But I guess it's better than it all coming loose later on. And it really does make it pretty sturdy. So you can see here one second. So you can see this is a pretty long piece and it's pretty sturdy. So it's like a bows a little bit, but for this only being three quarter inch, I think it's plenty strong enough. But yeah, so a lot of planning in advance and putting all the little connectors on is pretty meticulous, but I think it'll be worth it when it's all done. So. So what we're doing here, these pieces are gonna be the supports. So the top is obviously a giant rectangle, the back is a giant rectangle, so it's gonna have two supports in the top, two in the back. And uh, how we're gonna connect them, we're gonna use those little inside corner pieces, but we're also tapping the ends. So if you look, ah, this stuff has a hole in the end, so we're tapping it out, and then you can put a screw in there. And then that screw fits perfectly into the channel. So then you slide it into the channel and then all you gotta do is drill a hole in the other side so you can get your little Allen wrench through there and tighten it. And that's a good way to connect the T's. So we will probably do that plus the little inside corner pieces, you know? 
That way, for the top, it'll be super stout and structurally strong. So yeah, get these finished up, tap all these, and then we can uh, get the top piece all assembled and then start working on the upright legs. almost got the top of the frame built, but uh, we ran into a problem. We ran out of peanuts, so I don't know why I grossly underestimated the amount of these we would need. I just didn't really think it through, and I figured if I needed more, I could just order them later and add them, but you can't. They all have to be put in as you build it. So like, as we make this connection, these ones all have to be in here, you know? And we have to have enough to screw the mesh on, on the whole top and on all the sides as we go. So that is the one thing we're finding about using this extruded aluminum is you literally have to have the whole thing planned out, every single part you need, and you have to have it planned out before you start building anything. If you put stuff together without thinking it through, you're gonna end up having to take it back apart, which we did quite a few times. But now I think I got a pretty good idea what we need. So I ordered some more of the T-nuts. They will be coming here very shortly. I think like one day, two days, something like that. So in the meantime, we're gonna go home Take a break. I might give you a little update on the fish because we got another fish. But uh, yeah, we will get back to this when the shipment shows up. This gives you an idea of how big the pond actually is because this is pretty much the footprint of the pond. So Looking good so far, super sturdy, and it's only halfway screwed together. So while we're waiting for parts, I figured I'd give you a little update on the aquarium. So we have a new fish. You can see right here we got a fourth Fogo bass. And this one actually came from one of my friends. Friend Fran sold it to me, but our buddy Jaden is the one that originally raised all four of these together from like two or three inches. And then Fran got the big one, I took the other three, and now they are all back together. So, probably won't be able to see him. I'll try to get some cool shots, but he's got a super red face. Pretty good chance that he's a male and the rest are females. So that will be pretty cool, but look at this. Look how big the arowana are. They're getting huge. The stingray is getting huge. She's like doubled in size. Even the like, Tigrinus catfish is getting massive, so they're all growing like crazy. Definitely outgrowing this tank and ready for a new home. So once those parts show up, we will hurry, get the, uh, the pond, I almost said the fish tank, get the pond all finished, and then we'll have another video putting these guys all over there. I'm sure they're going to love their new home. It's going to be much better than this little tank. So. Okay, we are back at the greenhouse. The snow has been crazy, so luckily I got the day off work. So now we're gonna be working on this. But uh, we got all our parts that needed, that we needed. And uh, while we were waiting for the parts to show up, we got the aerator added to the pond and we added some cool plants. But uh, if you guys wanna see that, check out the last video I posted because we made a separate video on that. But here it is. We got all the peanuts. So now we can continue working. So we're going to finish this top frame, put the rest of the T-nuts in, make this connection, this connection, and this connection, and then we will start cutting and building the little upright legs. And then once that's done, i got to get this bottom frame off and get that attached to this frame, which is probably going to be a pain in the butt, but uh, I'm sure I'll need some help with that, so I'll probably get someone over here to help me. But yeah, let's get ready to go and get working again. I'm excited to get it done. Top frame is completely done. It's flipped over right now, but you can see we got all the little gusseted corners on. All the T-nuts are installed on the other side. And then this side are these middle support pieces. You can see we drilled through it like I was talking about. So you just drill that little hole, and then that's how you tighten the nut on the inside of there, or the screw. And then we also added these little corner pieces just to make it extra strong. But uh, this thing really is super sturdy. For being three quarter inch, I'm pretty happy with my choice of this material. I think it's gonna work great. Now, let's get the uprights done. The first two uprights are on. And even with nothing connecting them, they're surprisingly sturdy. So I think once this is all hooked together, there's gonna be 
plenty strong. Okay, the frame is finally complete. It was a pain in the ass, but it all looks pretty good. And it's all pretty sturdy, I think. So once again, I forgot to put half the T-nuts in the top and I had to go back through and add them all. So that was a pain, but that is all right. But yeah, the frame is done. It looks pretty good. It is not very heavy, and the whole thing is pretty sturdy. I think it's gonna work great. So, I'm probably done for the night, but we're gonna come back, we're gonna wrap the whole thing in mesh, and then I'm gonna have to get a couple people to help me, and we're gonna put it over the pond and anchor it to the concrete. So, almost done. This is much closer. All right, we have started getting the mesh attached. So we're starting here on this little front wall. You can see, whoa. Look at our little screws and washers. Just holding it in every six inches. You can see we've got this corner here pretty tight so far. But we're just slowly working our way around. It's kind of a pain, but we will get this side on. And I'm sure we will kind of have a method down. So go from there. Okay, the first side is completely done. I think it looks super good. You can see we got her pretty tight, so I'm pretty happy with that. You can see on the edges, all our little washers and screws, all these little spiky ends, I just hammered them down so it's not super sharp or anything. And yeah, I think it looks good. That's the smallest side, but that will be on the front, so I want that one to look good. But it's a pretty good idea of what this is all gonna look like. I'm pretty happy about it. I think it's gonna look great. But uh, I don't know if you guys can tell or see on camera, but I am like pouring sweat. Remember the other day when I said it was uh, snowing and all crazy? Now it's like 55, 60 degrees outside. So in here it is 85 degrees and 70% humidity and I am not adapted to the heat yet. I'm dying. So definitely gonna get this enclosure done and then the next step in the greenhouse is gonna be getting the fans and the misters and the foggers and everything hooked up to keep it a little bit cooler. So I'm not dying all year and so we can keep it ready for plants and animals. But uh, yeah, I guess we gotta wrap all the other sides of this. So it's probably gonna take me a while. It's kind of a pain getting these little T-nuts all spread out. I gotta like hold it with a little Allen wrench and then grab the screwdriver with my other hand and then hold some parts with my mouth and it's a pain, but that's all right. We'll just take our time, get the rest of the thing knocked out. I'm excited to see what it looks like when it's done. Yeah, one more thing I wanted to mention was uh, all these parts you see me using, this extruded aluminum, the wire mesh, everything except basically some of the screws and washers. I got off Amazon because I'm lazy and I like to buy stuff off Amazon. I just go through and check out all the reviews and see what looks good and then buy it and try it out. So I will link that below in the description and they are Amazon affiliate links so I get a little bit of kickback if you buy it through there. So I would appreciate it but uh, yeah, just know if you're working with the extruded aluminum, I do love it. It seems awesome so far. I'm really happy with it but plan everything out in detail and expect it to be a little bit more work than you're thinking. Okay, this side is done. So, this side went a lot better. I think I'm kind of getting down a method for everything. And then the mesh that I found is only four feet wide. So we're gonna have a bunch of spots where it's two pieces connected. So I used hog rings to connect that, which actually ended up being nice because it helped stretch it tight. So like, if anything, this side is tighter than the first side we did. So this turned out much better than I expected and it looks great. Only thing with these hog rings is they got pointy little ends. See like this one I need to fix. Hard to see. But yeah, they got pointy little ends so you gotta smash them down like this. That way the pointed parts aren't sticking out in either direction. And then uh, yeah, I just did, overlapped it by about an inch and a half. And then just did the hog rings kind of zigzagged all the way up. So let me show you what those look like and how you do that. Okay, so the hog rings are cheap. You can find all this on Amazon too. I will probably post a link below. But uh, you just gotta buy these hog ring pliers. They like spring shut, so you gotta hold them open. And then these are the rings. You can get them in like all kinds of different sizes. But you just wedge that up in there. 
and then put that where you want it and just smash it and just make a little ring so super easy way to connect everything uh, worked great we'll link it below so if you're interested go buy it but uh sorry I'm not filming more not getting much b-roll I'm doing this by myself and it is a struggle but uh yeah I'll show you when I'm done I'm gonna get the rest of the sides wrapped and get this knocked out and then we will be ready to slam it on the pond all right Tiffany's here helping me today so it's much easier and going much better but uh, our biggest problem we're having you can see is well, I don't know if you can see but, like we get all these wrinkles in it and the reason is because we're building this huge thing on the boardwalk like we don't have a flat square surface to build it on so if we're building it on a flat surface it'd be much easier but like this spot of the boardwalk's high that spot's low so it makes this side go up which makes this bow which makes the mesh not want to go on square and we got to make sure it's all on square so it fits up right and so we're not tightening it down and forcing this thing to stay unsquare so uh, you can see we got some little screws under here kind of forcing this up to get some of the bow out and we just get all the t-nuts in and the screws just get them all in place loosely we don't tighten anything up and then I kind of go through and just tweak things until we get it to where I can see that the lines down the edges are all straight, you know. So if I'm screwing into this row of holes, it stays that way the whole way down. And then I go tighten everything up, and then we can pick up some of the slack with the hog rings here in the middle. So this is the last panel on the back, and one more side panel. And we got to flip it over and do the top. So super fun. Not as hot in here today, but it's still miserable. We are completely done with the mesh. I'm super happy with how it turned out. We decided last minute to go get some Plasti Dip and paint all the little hog rings just so it looks better and cover up the points a little bit. So Tiffany's knocking that out. But yeah, it looks super good. Now we just gotta flip it over and get it on the pond, which I'm sure is gonna be a task all on its own, but it's probably hard to see in video but I'm super happy with how it turned out. So let's get it on the pond. We'll go from there. It's done. It looks great. We got it flipped over, which is kind of a pain, but uh, putting it on is gonna be even more of a pain, but it looks awesome. I'm super happy with it. But we gotta get it on. I don't know how much we're gonna get filmed. Ah! Did you see that? I don't know how much we're gonna get filmed because this is probably really gonna be a nightmare. But uh, we'll get with you when it is on the pond, and we'll go from there. This is it. It is on the pond. I'm super stoked. I think this looks awesome. So now we are going to mount it to the concrete. So we're pretty much going to replace where these are mounted with a pipe with concrete anchors, drill holes, and drill all the way through. That way it's all nice and secure. we got to square up this front to make sure the garage door, everything is good for that. And then uh, we got to build the garage door. So this is basically what it is going to be. And then there's going to be, like I said, the horizontal bifold door that folds up like that. You probably can't see that. <laughs> but uh, there. So whenever we want, we can open the front completely and it'll look how it does right now. But when we're not here or when we don't want to risk the fish jumping out or birds getting in, we can go ahead and close the door and everything will look awesome. But I'm stoked. This feels huge. So this is going to be an awesome enclosure for the other animal that I'll tell you about here in a minute. But let's get this anchored and go from there. All right, the enclosure is all anchored in, but that is going to be it for this episode. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and then like this video so you can see part two where we get the garage style door all built for this and get it completely finished. But first, we need to make some room in the uh, aquarium. So I think we're going to move some of the bass over. So stay tuned to see the bass get moved over into the pond and then part two of this video and then the rest of the fish coming to the pond immediately after. So subscribe to the channel, like the video, you know the deal.